going to take you far out now, far out into outer space, where NASA's first spacewalk of the year is underway. Two astronauts are doing some maintenance work on the International Space Station, and you can see them here on this live video from NASA. It sometimes blows my mind when we can actually watch this happening in real time down here on Earth while they are up there in space, and these images are being beamed back to us. No matter how you think about the world, this is kind of cool. Uh, they are upgrading a very crucial power system. So for more on this, let us bring in CBS News space analyst Bill Harwood. He is following the latest from Merritt Island, Florida, just outside the Kennedy Space Center. So, Bill, uh, take us through today's spacewalk. Why is it so significant? Well, first of all, Ed, you know, I've been doing this for a long time, and it still blows my mind that I can watch this video of these guys up there in space while, you know, 250 miles away, and I'm down here in my little office. Yeah. Um, it's a critical spacewalk, as you said. You know, the space station moves into and out of Earth's shadow every 90 minutes. So when they're in sunlight, the solar arrays on the station provide the, the lab's power. But when they go behind the planet, they have big batteries. They have 48 of these old nickel-hydrogen batteries on board that store that solar energy so when they're, when they're in darkness, they can keep the station powered. Uh, so what they're doing is like everybody's tele, uh, cell phones. Are you still there? Yeah, I am, Bill. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. I, I thought I'd lost my signal for a second. I was going to say, just like your cell phone, you know, over time, when you repeatedly recharge batteries, you end up having to replace them. They knew that when they built the station, and so that's what they're doing now. They're replacing these 48 big batteries with 24 more powerful units. They're smaller, but they're more efficient. During this spacewalk, the astronauts are installing three of those in the electrical connections they need to make it happen. There's another spacewalk coming up next Friday to continue the work. So, Bill, you know, um, I'm always curious about these spacewalks and whether or not they're dangerous. I know they're part of the job and part of their occupational hazard of astronauts. But how long have these spacewalks been happening other than obviously man walking on the moon? Because I seem to recall and this is going to sound super corny, so I apologize. But I seem to recall like watching I Dream of Jeannie and seeing Major Tony Nelson doing a spacewalk <laughs> on that show. So it feels like it's been around for a long time. Well, it has. You know, the Russian cosmonaut Alexei Leonov uh, went out for the first time in 1965. A U.S. astronaut followed shortly thereafter. And on the space station alone, Vlad, we're, uh, today's spacewalk is the 214th since they started building the station back in 1998. So uh, I won't say they're commonplace. They're never routine. If you think about it, the astronauts outside the station are moving just as fast as the station. They're moving at 17,000 miles an hour. And obviously, if you hit a little piece of space debris or if you snag your suit, uh, you've got a real problem. So it's very definitely a risky thing to do. Uh, so they only do them when they have work they think is critical and absolutely needs to be done. And, Bill, one of the astronauts on today's spacewalk is Anne McLean. Uh, she is set to conduct her second one next week, um, and that is expected to be historic. Tell our audience why that is. Well, yeah, it is a little bit historic. Uh, you know, Christina Cook, who just got up to the space station, is going to go out with Anne McLean, and that'll be the first all-female spacewalk in space history. Uh, the first female spacewalker, again, was a Russian cosmonaut, Svetlana Savitskaya, back in 1984. U.S. astronaut Kathy Sullivan went out that same year and became the first U.S. female spacewalker. And when Anne McLean and uh, Christina Cook go out next Friday, they'll be the 13th and 14th female spacewalkers in the history of uh, doing these sorts of things. So, you know, it's one of those things, I guess it's worth noting because it is something new. But I think if you ask either of the two astronauts, they would say they just want it to be counted like any other spacewalk. And, and, and as one of them said to me earlier, you know, when, when you guys in the media stop asking me about this, I'll know we've achieved true equality. So... Uh, you know, it's one of those things that we all follow. I'm not sure how important it is to them personally. Yeah, no, I, and I get that. And I, you know, um, and we should also point out that they're going to be guided by uh, female flight directors. But, you know, it, it's the same thing. I had an interesting uh, conversation, Bill, with some uh, female combat Marines in uh, California, Camp Pendleton. And many of them, because they're young, didn't even know that women were excluded from some of the combat arms in which they are now, in, in the case of the two Marines I was talking to, are 
officers um, in field artillery. And I get that. That's great that they realize that they just think of themselves as fem as artillery officers and not female artillery officers. But I think for young women in this country and around the world, when they're thinking about what they can do and what is possible to see something like this means really that there are no limits to as high, how high they can go to, to not be too cliche. Um, and that's what I think why people are fascinated by the fact that it's going to be an all female spacewalk. Well, I certainly agree with that. And, and Anne McLean, in one of her previous interviews, had talked about uh, if she is a role model, she hopes it's one that does in other young women's lives what, what when she started growing up and decided she wanted to be an astronaut, because by that point, there were females in the astronaut corps. Uh, there's more every selection. And so I think it's one of those things that has evolved. And certainly NASA, uh, I don't think, considered that when they assigned these astronauts to these spacewalks. It's who's best prepared, who's trained, and who's ready to go do it. And what their gender is, I don't think matters to NASA. So it's a, it is a milestone. It's certainly something worth noting, and I'm sure they're going to have a, a great time out there. Yeah, and, I, and I'll just say this, too. Um, growing up as a little kid, uh, it, it works in the reverse, because I remember um, one of my early childhood heroes, uh, who I thought was an absolute badass, was Amelia Earhart. And I never thought of her as a female pilot. I just thought of her as a badass pilot, and I wanted to be just like her. And so, um, it, the, you know, when you're not thinking in terms of, you know, whether somebody is a man or a woman and they're just doing something incredible that can be applauded, uh, I get that. Yeah, no question. In this case, Sam McLean is an Army helicopter pilot, very accomplished. And uh, Christina Cook is a research scientist. She's done uh, quite a bit of... Uh, of exploration already. She's made long duration stays in Antarctica and that sort of thing. So these are very outstanding people and certainly uh, up to the task of going outside the space station. All right. Uh, CBS News space analyst Bill Harwood, always great to have you to help us understand exactly what is happening 250 miles above the surface of the Earth. Thank you, Bill. Sure thing.